Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're going to continue on our informational tutorial by talking about data tables and structures. We'll start with structures. Uh, so we obviously spoke previously about variables and arrays. Structures are a bit like having a blueprint where you store your variables and your arrays, but uh, it's just for storing stuff, storing this information. And what's really good about structures is you can add them to any blueprint. You can uh, create data tables from those and you can then use that to build up your information profile on certain things like let's say creatures are a good example. Um, but I use them for so many things. I use, I've used structures in nearly every project. Um, I've used them for weapons. I've used them for AI. I've used them for inventory systems, all sorts of stuff. They are incredibly useful and I think you're silly if you don't use them in your games. Um, so let's open one up. I've created one here called a weapon strap. Now I've just done this as an example um, to hold information with like things like weapon name, current ammo, ammo reserve, particle effects, particle effect location. Um, I wouldn't use the particle effect location as much. It's just an example to show you a vector being used. You've got things like uh, weapon description, uh, weapon icons, which are textures. You've got particle systems in here. You can add almost anything in here. You can add object references. You can add animation references. Uh, and you can you can get us all by just going to an add variable, clicking the drop down, and the world's your oyster. You can add enumerations to this. You can add um, just all sorts of things. You can add maps to this. <clears throat> if you can create it uh, as an informational kind of variable or um, object in the world, you, you can add it. You can add it to this structure and make a reference to it. We've got interfaces. You've got object types. You've got, like, look, every single object I've created is in here her badge is in here you've got um all sorts of stuff literally just play around with it and you can you can see, see for yourself i mean like these are all the different types of enums we can add into this uh, and all your normal variables are in here too let's um let's see what else we can get in here i'm sure you can get animation or it might be anim it might be under anim um and in blueprints, you've got, there's all sorts of stuff. Uh, Anim notifies, montages, instances, sequences. There's all sorts of stuff you can add in here. Play around with it, have a look at it, explore it yourself. But as I say, there's so many things you can add to this to hold that information and store it. it they're, they're invaluable tools to creating um, video games, uh, especially in Unreal Engine. So once we've now got this, this uh, structure we can either do a couple of things like I said we can either uh, add these structures to our, um, our objects in the world uh, or we can create a data table from them now if I go back to our variable tutorial um, blueprint you can see where we added all the variables and went through them in our arrays and you'll probably see it already we've got the structure the weapon struct we've created um, in our variables already I've set it already up for us to do that just click on the drop down and search weapon strap now again like we've mentioned before you can do a get and if we pull off that get we can break to get that information and as you can imagine we can use that now to add things to our code like for example that particular system if we were doing our firing um, our firing mechanism and we wanted to have our particle system we can do spawn emitter you can either do at location or you can do attached now we have a particle effect location here we could do the location and plug in the emitter and every time we fired it would spawn this particle effect at this location or you could do another name value instead and do the, uh, for example, we had the uh, spawn emitter attached. And if we were referencing our weapon, for example, 
I could get a reference to weapon in here as well and attach the particle system. Then if we had a weapon reference, we could attach that to the attach the component. And then we could even have a um, bone name reference for where the muzzle, like for example, if you see my weapon tutorial back in the day, you have a muzzle section um, of bone on the skeletal mesh. You could just have it, the name muzzle in there and attach that up to it too. And with all that combined, you wouldn't need the location, rotation, and scale, but you could get everything else and have it attached to that. So lots of different ways you can utilize a structural benefit. Um, as I said, an invaluable tool that you really should be using in your games uh, to make your lives easier more than anything. Because again, if you had um, if you had 50 references, 50 variables, just say, um, on an item, you'd have to call that item every time to pull out that information every time. Whereas if you held that information in a strap or a data table, you would make your life, it would make your life way easier, basically. Now, the one thing I didn't show you was how to call a strap. If you go into your content drawer, right click and go up to blueprints, you just click on structure and that's how you get your structure. And you'll get this little uh, icon appear and you can name it whatever you want and open it up and you'll be able to do all this by just clicking add variable. So now if, let's say we're creating an RPG. We have a list of lots of different enemies we want to spawn with all have their own uh, enemy information and we want to be able to get that enemy information and set it to that creature every time it spawns. And we just want to make our lives a bit easier than having tons and tons of code that does all this stuff. What we could do is turn it into a data table like this one here. So to do that, right click, go to uh, miscellaneous, go to data tables, click on that, and it'll come up asking you for the structure that you want to use to drive your data table. Now, in my instance, I clicked on weapon, weapon strap, clicked on that, clicked OK, and I was then given, well, this here, this little data table here. But we're going to delete that one for now because I don't want to use it. I want to use the one I've already created, this weapon data table. But again, name yours whatever you want. And when you open it, you'll be met with this. Now, there'll be nothing up here to begin with. It'll be blank. But if you just click on Add, it'll create a new row. And it'll give you all your default information. For me, it's pistol. I, I, I set my default up to be the pistol. But let's set up a sniper rifle for now. Sniper rifle. So we need to give that the name sniper rifle. And let's say in a sniper rifle, you have 20 ammo reserve. That's fine. Let's just set it to 25 just so it's a bit different. You'll want to set your current to your ammo. Uh, not that this matters for this tutorial. And then you want to give it a nice different um, particle system. Let's go for sparks. The location doesn't really matter, but you would set your location if that's what you wanted to do. Normally, as I said, I would actually probably have the muzzle um, location and store that as a name so we can match it up to the bone name. Uh, and then we'll just say, okay, instead of a pistol, this is a sniper rifle. Let's change the image to something random. Girl, hopper, there you go, that's fine. And then, I don't know what, oh, I made two extra variables. And then you'd obviously have your sniper rifle icon there. This is just, um, just for showing you what you would do. And then once all this information is stored, we want to be able to get it, right? Um, so let's go back into our variable tutorial. And let's say get a data table with let's get data table row now we can set this up to be our weapon data table and it already gives us the options of whatever we want to pick but we don't want to pick what we want to do is we want to get the weapon name for the weapon we're using right we if we're using a pistol we don't really want uh, the rifle information and we don't really want the shotgun information we want to make sure we're getting that pistol information um, and so we plug that in okay we can delete this emitter for the sake of this uh, next bit we don't need it so we'd say okay I want to get this structs information whatever's in here I want to get this information so that we can set this information to match what we need okay um, so now that we've got this, so basically this row name will match up to whatever's in this column. So it needs to match this column. It won't take it from the weapon name, I'm afraid. It will take it from the row name. 
So this needs to match whatever you're getting. Let's say you're spawning 50 enemies. You have zombies, bats, and ghouls. There's three different types. And you say to your system, I want 20 zombies, I want 20 ghouls, and I want 10 bats or it spawned in your area. What you want to do is you would, you would have all your information, so like zombie health, bat health, ghoul health, you'd have their attack damage, you might even have their animation stored in here. You'd have all that sort of stuff. Um, and what you would do is when you spawn every single creature, let's go back to our this here. So let's say, ignoring the strut, because you wouldn't pull that from a strut, that would be um, getting spawned. You'd have probably a list of names, um, and then you'd get their information. You'd probably also want to have a class setting in there as well, um, so that it knows which class to spawn. Um, and then what you would do is essentially break that information so that we get all that. And then every time one is spawned, you would set its information. So like its health, its, um, its uh, damage, all those sort of things um, on spawn. Okay, so again, you would probably go, okay, spawn uh, actor from class. Okay. Um, that class would be your master creature, for example. You'd get your master creature. Um, you'd have your class settings in here. So you'd spawn that class setting. And on that creature, you'd have a blank structure. So you'd have a blank structure. And then every time one spawned, because you'd do a for each loop until everything was spawned, you would spawn this actor and its information. You'd break off the information. You'd get its uh, health, its... You know, you get all those variables that you want to set, and then you'd set it using this. So every one of those that spawn gets its own unique health, gets its own unique damage that it can do, gets all that information from your data table. And that's kind of what you would use it for. It's to get this information and use it when you need it. So, for example, I use it in lots of different areas of my game. I have a type damage, so every time I do an attack, it gets this data table and tells me whether it's super effective or not effective, and it will times whatever that damage is by 0 0.5, 2, 1, to give me my final damage. I have a move list where it's got all of the accuracy, the power of the move, it's got uh, whether it has status effects, whether it causes a condition, all of that information is pulled out when I need it again. Uh, and then I have my creature information. This has all its typings, levels, you, you know, you use them, I use data tables for so many things because it's so easy to have it all stored into one file that I can open and look at and amend where I need to. And then you would just, um, you would just pull it as and when, okay? So very, very useful things. Hopefully this has helped you kind of understand how you might use structures and uh, data tables. Uh, as I say, you should be using them in your games for sure. Absolutely should be using them. Uh, as I say, just having all your variables for under one area, so much more useful than having them, having all of these separate and having to call them all separately, so much more useful. And data tables, again, storing all that information and being able to pull it out when you need to, again, an invaluable trick to making your games um, just code that little bit nicer, neater, and more efficiently than if you were to do all this separately. Because imagine having to pull out every one of these variables to then set every one of these variables. It just would be complete and utter chaos in your code. It would be such, it would be worse than spaghetti code. I don't know what code of code it would be, but it would be worse than spaghetti. Um, but yeah, hopefully that's helped. If it has, don't forget to leave a little like, leave a little comment with any other information you'd like me to cover. And um, of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It's free to do and you can always change your mind down the line. Thank you so much guys. I'll see you next time. Take care, bye.